Hello, I'm Dr. Pamela Ruig, Extension Mount Quality Veterinarian for the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And in this episode of our series of using on-farm culturing to improve mastitis treatment decisions, we're going to be moving into the laboratory. In this series, we've been talking about performing on-farm culture to implement a selective treatment strategy. Now remember, the results of using on-farm culturing are completely dependent on the ability to collect a clean milk sample, the ability to properly inoculate an auger plate, and the ability to read the plates using standard protocols that help us arrive at the proper diagnosis. In this episode, we're going to discuss inoculating the plates. So the objective of culturing milk from cows that have mastitis is to grow and identify the type of bacteria that's actually responsible for the infection. And to do that, that requires spreading a small volume of milk on a nutrient auger without introducing any contamination during that process. The steps are pretty simple and involve mixing the milk sample so that we get a representative sample to put on the plate. And we do that by dipping a swab or a loop in the milk sample and then carefully spreading that tiny little sample of the milk on the correct auger plate. The very first step in inoculating the plates is to gather our supplies. Remember, we have to keep those sterile and many of them should be stored in sealed containers at all times so they don't become contaminated with bacteria that don't originate from those mastitis infections. The supplies that we need include the auger plates. Make sure you don't take those lids off too soon because those plates are nutrient augers that can grow bacteria that are floating around in the air in the room we're working in. We need to have sterile swabs, disposable gloves, and cleaning supplies for our work area. We also need our milk samples. Uh, you can refer back to a previous episode for the process of collecting these samples aseptically. Now most of the time when we're doing on-farm culturing, we're using fresh milk samples that have been collected within an hour of two or two of when we're plating them. But if you cannot plate those milk samples within 24 hours, you should freeze those samples. And frozen samples need to be thawed before the plate is inoculated. Be sure to thaw those samples only at room temperature. Never put them in a microwave to thaw them or never put them in hot water to thaw them faster because the process of rapid thawing will destroy the bacteria that we're trying to grow. All right, so after you get your supplies together, then you, we need to clean off our workspace and we can clean that using either alcohol soaked gauze or another type of commercial disinfectant wipe. Then we want to wash our hands and put on new gloves. After having all the supplies arranged, we're ready to start the inoculation process. And the first step is to label the auger dish with the cow ID, the quarter that's affected, and the date that we're setting up that sample. Make sure you don't label the bottom of the plate or right all over the top of the plate. In fact, it's best to write on the sides of the plate because when we're identifying growth uh, 24 hours later, uh, those marks can sometimes obscure growth or make it difficult to read the plate. After we have the plate labeled, we wanna mix our thawed sample by inverting it several times. The purpose of mixing this sample is to make sure that the bacteria in that milk sample are evenly distributed so that when we dip our swab into it, we have a good chance of catching them. We then take our sterile swab, we dip it into the milk, and we leave that swab in there for about three to five seconds so it has time to absorb the milk. We then take the swab out 
and gently spread that swab over the top of the auger segment of the culture plate using the technique that we're showing. Our purpose of gently uh, uh, distributing that milk across the top of the auger is to be sure that we can spread out any bacteria that happen to be in there so we can identify them after the incubation period. Now regardless of what type of plate you're using, a biplate, a triplate, or a quad plate for example, every time we inoculate another segment of that plate, we'll dip the swab again, let it, the milk absorb, and repeat the process for each section separately. After each section of the plate is inoculated, we immediately cover the plate and lay it flat for about five to 10 minutes to let the milk absorb into the media. After the milk is absorbed, we're ready to put it in the incubator. And there's only one tricky thing to think about with incubating these plates. We wanna make sure we place the plate in the incubator upside down. The auger side is on the top, the lid is on the bottom. That sounds counterintuitive, but the reason for that is to prevent condensation from forming on the lid and dripping on the auger and causing the bacteria to, um, to flow all over the plate. So um, be sure to place these in the incubator upside down. We then incubate it. Make sure you check the temperature of your incubator. It should be approximately body temperature, which if you have a Fahrenheit thermometer is about 98.6, or if you have a Celsius, it would be 37 degrees. And we'll leave it in there for 24 hours. Make sure you don't read them too early. The bacteria really need a minimum of 24 hours to grow. We'll talk about reading the plates later, but we have to come back to what to do with that milk sample. We really recommend that you take that milk sample, immediately put the lid back on it after inoculating the plate, and throw it in the freezer. Uh, you may need that milk sample to submit it to a reference laboratory if you can't arrive at a diagnosis um, and you need another opinion. And then finally, after you're all done inoculating all the plates, take your disinfectant wipes or gauze swabs and alcohol, and again, make sure you clean up your workspace. Thank you.